The media have put that she's an ISIS supporter. She's gone to meet her husband who also supports ISIS. She's put her kids at risk. Where's her voice? Why are you just public, you know, putting all this out without hearing her voice? If she admits it, then fine. But you can't just go around and say she's an ISIS. She's gone to stay with ISIS when she clearly went on holiday with us. Shuki Begum, a 33-year-old law graduate and mother of five from Greater Manchester. Tonight, for the first time in months, her family believes she is safe and in an area controlled by Nusra Front militants in Syria, an opposition group linked to Al-Qaeda. In June, she mounted a daring escape with her five children from the so-called Islamic State, only to find herself taken hostage by criminal smugglers. Her sisters are desperate for the Turkish and British authorities to help bring her and the five young children home. We first spoke to them in the summer. Well, at the end of the day, their children, they didn't make any decisions. They're totally innocent and they need to be back home where they're safe. No child is safe there. No child should be um, forced to stay in And just that bring situation. her back, question her here, as long as she's just out of there, she needs to be home, then we know she's safe. For months, Channel 4 News has been in contact with Shuki Begum and her family. Tonight, for the very first time, we can reveal why this mother of five says she went to Syria, what happened when she got there, and her desperate attempt to get her and the children home safely. It's the summer of 2014. Shuki Begum and her family took their children on holiday to the Turkish coast. A few months earlier, her husband had decided to join the Islamic State in Syria. Her family say she had refused to go, but hoped he would meet them in Turkey, where she could persuade him to come home. But he never showed up. Here, she was filmed paragliding. Days later, she'd be in Syria. She had just given birth and her baby was four weeks old. Her sisters also claim she was desperate to have her husband back. She had just had the baby as well and she was kind of like looking after them herself, which is probably what made him her want to get him back more because she was trying to manage five kids by herself. There'll be people that are looking at this and say, look, she endangered the lives of her children by going into this war zone. Definitely, yes. Which is why I would say she wasn't in the Something's right Something's gone wrong and she, it couldn't have been in her usual state of mind. That's not Shuki. In a letter seen by Channel 4 News, Shuki Begum explains why she wanted to go. All I kept thinking was, I don't want the kids never to see their father again and I don't want the baby to have never met his dad. I suggested we meet in Turkey, but he said it was unsafe. So I came to Syria. I intended to see him then go back. On the way in, my bag was snatched. I had my phones, passports and my travel money. I thought I'd be allowed back and didn't think he would stop us, but he said he didn't want us to leave, so therefore will not help us back. For 10 months, Shuki Begum lived quietly under the rule of Islamic State militants. Police and intelligence agencies will no doubt want to know what she saw there. Channel 4 News was in contact online. She told us she hated life under ISIS and said she wanted to tell young Muslims in the UK not to go there. In one message, she told us that under ISIS, everything takes ages, except killing. That's done very quickly. After the beheadings happened, she did express her views. She said that it was more like they were acting like celebrities, just killing people and then posing on camera. She was totally against it. She was against IS. She didn't agree with anything they did. In her letter, Shuki Begum also claims that the Islamic State threatened to take away her children. They said the kids belonged in the Islamic State and they suggested they take the kids off me as I want to leave. That prompted Shuki Begum to attempt a daring escape. At the break of dawn, she and the children were smuggled out of ISIS territory to a town close to the Turkish border. Like thousands of desperate Syrians, they tried to cross, but with no passports and no money, they failed. This is the last picture the family received of Shuki and her children. It was taken by the smuggler who finally got her out of ISIS territory. Another family trying to cross the border filmed this video of Shuki's daughters. She and the children made at least four attempts to get to Turkey. Channel 4 News got through to her briefly on the phone as relations with the smuggler were going sour. My children are hungry. Really giving us much food at the moment because they said every time we ask for something, they say it costs money. That's what they say. The wife keeps kind of threatening to hurt the children behind my back, but I called to it and I confront. The line is cut. What's your name? Shuki. From where are you? Britain. How long time you stay in Syria here? 
10 months. 10 months. For more than 80 days, she had no contact with her family. During that time, this video emerged from a Syrian group claiming to be helping her. Several media organizations were approached and offered an interview with Shuki for a fee. But she was being held against her will. The family say she and the children were finally rescued on Monday. What would you say to anyone that's thinking of going out there? ISIS is a death cult. They're, I think they're an extremely violent group. Like we've, we've never had this type of group in history ever. Stay away from them. They're dangerous. Once you're in that territory, it's very hard to get out. How can they're anyone... a killing cult. Yeah. They're using their guns as if they're toys. They're killing people like as if they're you know, kill it, not killing people. So how could you even think it's religion? It's not religion, it's, it's not even human to what they're doing, it's, it's sick. I think they're advertising it as though it's a religious duty on people, but um, a religious duty is to look after your parents and be with your family, but they just seem to be abandoning the parents and the families and not caring. The Foreign Office say they continue to work closely with the Turkish authorities on the whereabouts of a British national and her children, and stand by to provide consular assistance. Well, Asad Beg is in Oldham. Asad, you've been talking to Shuki Begum's family. Yes, John. It's been a difficult and emotional few months for the family, not knowing where she is, who she's with, or whether she's safe. But now they've had first contact. That seems that she's safe and well. It's an extraordinary story that starts with Shuki Begum here in Greater Manchester to finding herself in Syria. Earlier today, I spoke with the family and began by asking them when they last heard from her. We heard from Shuki this morning. Uh, she rang again. Uh, she still sounds exhausted and weak. Um, but she said that she was going to the people who are helping her now, they're going to take her and the children to the doctor to get their health checked. So she's been taken care of? Yeah, it sounds yes, like she's, she's been receiving taken care of her me medical help. We do believe she's in good hands because she's actually made contact with us after three and a half months. And she's keeping us informed And she well. did say, I'm with good people, so... How did you feel once you answered the phone and, you, and it was her voice on the other side? Obviously, it was a very emotional moment. Uh, my mum and dad breaking down. She was breaking down on the other side of the phone, just telling us that she had got set free and she was all when right. When you don't know if your people. sister's even alive, and then to, to get that call and hear her voice, is, I can't describe it. Did she describe you know, what had happened and how she'd managed to get free? Uh, she said that she was away from the bad people who had her kidnapped and held her against her will and that she, she was set free from them now and now she's with people who are actually helping her. Are you relieved even though that she's with a group that's you know, affiliated to Al-Qaeda? I don't know, just as long, once, she's out that, once she's back home that's when we'll be fully relieved. We're still a bit worried, you know, like, because she's still out there and we don't want her to go missing again. Um, we're reassured because it does seem like this group is letting her contact us now and keeping us informed. A lot of people will be watching this and thinking, how does a mother with five children end up in ISIS territory? There's a lot of questions that still need to be answered, obviously, how she ended up there, who was responsible for taking her there. What did she think of ISIS? She, she, she hated them. She was always against ISIS. She, she always showed how upset the beheadings made her. Are you guys worried about how the UK authorities will treat her once she's back? We're just worried about her. Um, she's been through a lot already. When she comes back, um, obviously they will have to question her, see where she's at and stuff, but it's still going to be a lot of pressure on her. And with the last call, she just seems weak and exhausted. And especially the kids, what effect it's going to have on the kids. They just need to be back with their family. Do you think she put her children in far too much danger? Not out of her own will, no. She would never do that. Like I say, she was taken against her own will. We know her children are everything to her. She would never, ever put them in any type of danger. But like I said, the media have put that she's an ISIS supporter. She's gone to meet her husband who also supports ISIS. She's put her kids at risk. Where's her voice? Why are you just public, you know, putting all this out without hearing her voice? If she admits it, then fine. But you can't just go around saying she's an ISIS. She's gone to stay with ISIS when she clearly went on holiday with us. Love you know, you. you want to believe what else is true in the media about ISIS and who's going and not, if they're putting this about my sister. So you, you reject the reports that you've... Of course. The they're putting pictures that aren't even her, as Shuki Begum, with the face covering, Girls in groups with the niqab, the bulkers. She's not radical. She's never wore a 
worn a face covering. She's never supported any type of violence, aggression. She's always been against family. Her whole family have. Many viewers will think that she brought this trouble on herself. What, by going on holiday? People go on holiday all the I time. Can, I can understand it though. If they're putting it in the media, if someone's gone to join ISIS, I can understand where they're coming from. You would clearly say they've gone to join such a radical group. They're extreme. They're not, they're not even human. So whoever does join them, why should they come back here? But she's not. She's like us. She went on holiday with us and she's been missing. We've reported her as kid, uh, missing. Now it's clear that she's been kidnapped because she's made a call home. The police are helping us. She, she, is, she has um, said that she has been kidnapped, so it's not the fact that she's gone to join ISIS or nothing. What would you say to people out there that are thinking about going to Syria? Just don't go and join such a I think anybody who would even consider that would need psychological help because you'd have to be pretty evil to support such a barbaric group.